This next chapter will be dealing with orientation constraints and wire parameters. We'll be using orientation constraints to constrain the spinal column to the four control objects so that we get that nice twist off action that we were looking at. We'll be using wire parameters to help us get a little bit of extra twist from the tailbone up into the lower back. So to start with, let's do something that is the simple side of it, which is just the tailbone and the orientation constraint. If you notice that the control object is aligned, like we did in the previous chapter, to the bone. So we're going to pick the tailbone, go to animation, constraints, orientation constraint. The dotted line shows us that we're looking for another object to constrain to. Then we're going to select the control object for the tailbone. The motion panel opens, showing us the orientation constraint that has been added. What has actually happened is for the bone is, is when you add an orientation constraint or other uh, controllers from the animation list, it builds a list controller retaining the original controller that was on the uh, object and adds the new one to it. This is the same as the way we are zeroing out controls. Orientation constraint, however, basically takes control over any previous controllers ahead of it in the list. In this case, it's only added one target object to the controller. It doesn't matter what the weight currently states, it's 100%. You need more than one controller in the list to be able to weight it between multiple uh, objects. You have choice of local or world. World is what you want 99% of the time. World basically means that it's working on a world orientation. As this object rotates in world space, this one will follow and do exactly the same. Keep initial offset we'll need for, uh, for the bones. And you'll see how that works. Right now, it doesn't do anything different. Let's move up into the lumbar area. We'll start with the first bone. This one's going to be, for now, orientation constrained 100% to the waist control. Again, I'm going to select orientation constraint, pick the waist control, and now you can see that that control controls the upper spine 100%. The next two bones will actually share a bit of rotation between these two so that we get that twist off effect. I'm going to start making it a little bit easier. I have added my constraint system to my quad menu. I'm going to pick it out of here. You'll see why in a minute. It's going to make it a lot faster to work with. Orientation constrain it. I'm going to orientation constrain it to the waist control. And if you notice, the bone system moved just that little bit. This is where keep initial offset comes in. If I turn on keep initial offset, you'll see it move back. This is because this bone isn't completely aligned to this control object. And when I said you were going to be orientated to this 100%, it automatically pops the world space of this object. Keep initial offset, moves it back. We're now going to constrain it off to the shoulder control as well. From the quad menu, I don't have to go up through the menu system anymore. I can just pick right on the name bar and it'll pick the last used item in that quad system. Pick the control object in the chest, and now I can set up weights between these two. This bottom one is going to have most of the control. We're going to set the bottom control to 66.5. We're going to set the, chest con the uh, shoulder control to 33.5. Now you can see that when I rotate this object, the next bone in the chain doesn't rotate 100% with this control. When I rotate this one, it doesn't rotate 100% with this control either. It shares a bit of twist off. Let's move on up the chain to the next joint. Constrain to the waist control. Keep initial offset. Set the value this time the other way around, 33.5 to the bottom one and 66.5 to the top. And we're starting to get that nice twist-off action happening. 
The next bone in the chain is going to be 100% to the control for the shoulders. And again, it pops. We just need to turn on keep initial offset, and it'll stay where it's supposed to be. So now we're getting a nice twist off effect happening up and down. We're actually going to make this better as we go. For the head bones and neck bones, we just have one neck bone here. And we want this neck bone to stay aligned to the top of the spinal column. We could either go to the control object and worry that these objects aren't aligned correctly, or we can just go up to the uh, top of the uh, right to the top of the um, bone system that it's currently linked to. So I'm going to line it up to the nub bone at the top of the uh, spine. Turn on Keep Initial Offset. I'm also going to orientation constrain it up to the head control. This time we're going to leave it at 50-50 because we want this one to be halfway between the spine and halfway between the head. The head bone, we're just going to constrain 100% to the control for the head. So the control for the head now has a nice twist off for the neck area. When we rotate the shoulders, you can see that the neck stays 50-50 between the head and the shoulders. And the head stays aligned in the eye line that it's looking in. This means we don't have to keep adjusting the eye line. The waist control has a nice twist off. And you can actually pick any two controls if you wanted to bend them both at the same time to make a character bend over. Right now I'm not completely happy with the way the bottom of the spine is working here. When I rotate this I'm getting a really sharp angle happening in this first joint of the, uh, of the upper spine. To fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to constrain this bone off to another object and then weight it between that object and this control so I can actually slow the rotation of this bone down a fair bit. You need an object that is aligned currently to the controls so it has the same orientation as the control objects or that bone. So the way I do this is, is I create a point helper. Make it fairly small. And I'm going to use my align tool to align it to the, to the bone in position and orientation so that I know it's aligned to it. And I'm just going to link that control, or that point helper, sorry, to the main waist control so that it moves with the rig. Now what I'm going to do is I want to add another constraint into the list. Another way you can add constraints, by the way, into the list is add orientation target if you don't want to go through the uh, menu system. I now have a 50-50 twist off. And I happen to know a really good solution for this is if I actually make the point helper constraint a little stronger than the actual control object. So I want to say 65% to the point helper, 35% to the control. Now you'll see when I rotate the character over, I actually get a little bit of extra bend going in the direction that I'm twisting this, but it isn't shearing the waist off at the bottom anymore. It hasn't affected at all how the rest of the controls work up the spine. This is nice though because now I can get some really nice shapes out of the spine. Bend the character over and the eye line still trying to remain the same. Now for the lower spine, down into the tailbone area, we don't need a lot of hip, mo hip movement side to side or forward to backwards. This is a good rocking action for when we're doing walk cycles or, or trying to show weight shifting side to side. However, we have a fair bit of twist when we twist side to side with our hips. We can twist it a fair bit. And what you'll notice is, is when you rock your hips forward and backwards or side to side, you actually 
bend quite sharply at the waist. When you twist your hips side to side, it actually bends very softly up through into the spinal column. We're going to soften this effect a little bit now by making sure that this next bone in the spine actually rotates a little bit with this one, but only through the x-axis. A constraint system won't work very well for us here because constraints work on an XYZ value and can't have a constraint on a single axis. We're going to use wire parameters for this. To make this work, we need to add another controller to our list for this bone. So that when we, if we take a look in the motion panel, we can see that in the rotation, a list controller was built with the orientation constraint added. We need to wire one more layer of controllers back into our control object. So I'm going to go and add in the available slot for this bone a Euler XYZ controller. We don't need to make it active. You can if you want. Uh, it won't help. It'll, uh, it'll still work if it isn't active. So now we have a new layer. Let's name it and let's name it wire X so that we know what that controller was added there for. With the bone selected, I'm going to right click and in my quad menus, I'm going to pick wire parameters. This is now asking which track would I like to wire to something. So transform rotation. There's the first controller in the list, the orientation constraint we added. There's the wire X and we want the X rotation. Now it's asking what do you want to wire to. So I want to wire to the control object, the transform rotation, and we froze the rotation or zeroed out the rotations earlier on the control objects. So this is where this comes into play. We know that the wire X value is a value of zero because it's additive in the list controller on the bone. We also happen to know that the second controller in the control object has a value of zero as well because it was additive. The first controller holds any offset. The second one will be zero. So we know we're not going to get a sudden pop in the position or rotation of the, uh, of the bone. So I want to pick X rotation and that brings up the wire parameters dialog. Here's the bone, here's the control object. We want the control object to control the bone. So we pick a flow of right to left. Let's just press connect. The expression has already been written in there for us. And let's see what we've got so far. So let's rotate this around the X value. You'll notice that the bone is actually rotating in the opposite direction that we want it to. Fix that very easily by sticking a negative sign in front of X rotation and pressing update. And it now rotates in the right direction, but it rotates 100%. And we want to twist off, so we need this to rotate half of what it is here. That's easy again. Times 0.5. An update. And you'll now notice that that bone only rotates 50% of the control object. You now have a really nice setup for animating with. You can get a nice soft twist in the body as the, the hips rock side to side as you're walking. You can rock your hips forward and backwards as well. You can get nice twists through the, the body so you can adjust the waist area without affecting the eye line of the shoulders or the head. You can then adjust the shoulders without affecting the eye line or the waist and you can affect the head itself. Posing this character becomes quite easy now for an animator because they can put the head where they need it and then get the attitude of the shoulders the way they need it.